Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Warhol series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, we are launching out of Wallops Flight Facility on the east coast of Virginia, and we are going to be aiming at... at... Jupiter! And you can see the flight that I attempted to aim at Jupiter previously, the Magni-2 and the probe named after Kim Stanley Robinson, but that uh, that didn't work out quite well because it lost electric charge. But now we have RTGs, or at least a uh, simple form of RTGs, so we can try it out. But first I need to time warp so that we're in the right position. Uh, we need uh, Jupiter slash Joule at a 96-ish degree angle ahead of Earth. So we're basically going to let Earth do most of the work here. And let's see. The inclination makes it a little bit hard to gauge it, but I think that's pretty close. Maybe that's 100 degrees. Even holding a protractor to the screen wouldn't really help in this case. That's about 90. I think that's close enough. Jupiter has a huge sphere of influence anyway. So yes, I think we can launch and let's go to VAB to take a look at our probe. So here we are, the Robinson 2. I've been quite a bit ambitious with this one because we've got two goo containers, Science Junior, as well as other instruments. Though not as many as I would like. Wait a minute, uh, did I forget the other instruments? Oh, uh, I think I... Oh, no, they, they're here. Right. They're on the instrument arm, right? Uh, thermometer, barometer, gravioli, even a camera. I've sort of uh, modeled it after my Voyager mission. But, uh, boy, the, the Snap RTGs, in order to get enough to produce the required amount of electricity, well, I sort of had to stack them up like this. I still uh, might need some electric power from solar panels, so I've uh, slapped a few of those on though I'm not expecting too much from them. And yeah, actually, uh, speaking of which, maybe I should, maybe I should put some extendable solar panels just in case, if we have the space. Couldn't do any harm. So uh, I'll put a, a pair of these Suncat ones. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. This probe has why did the delta V change? Oh, uh, because of the fairings. Okay, I took the fairings off, so the mass uh, was reduced, and so the delta V went up. But it's actually about eighteen thousand. Actually, while while we're at it, let's, I think uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. We've got uh, one kilonewton thrusters in the bottom of this one. There's a second stage, burning MMH N two O four, the SS engine that I like to use, and that's about it. Otherwise, it's all nice and strutted up. Uh, though actually these struts weren't supposed to go all the way to the dish. Okay, anyway, enough fiddling around. Let's uh, put the fairing on and see the real numbers. I've decided to go with four part fairings this time because uh, maybe they'll separate a little bit better. I, oh boy. Okay, so the game crashed in between there, but here we are again. I've made the same modifications, and so about 18,500 delta V altogether. So uh, half of that will be spent getting into orbit, and the other half to Jupiter. And perhaps some maneuvers to get close to Jupiter's moons, we'll see. So, uh, th this is the Magni-3 configuration with the RS-68A and the uh, LR-87 boosters. So, we will see how this works out with all the mods updated in this new version. I forget if we've launched this ver this rocket before. We shall see. Alright, so, uh, so yeah, let's take it out to the launch pad and see if it works. Okay, here we are matching inclinations with the moon. And of course it'll be different for Wallops than it was for Cape Canaveral or Baikonur. And so we'll see what the minimum is. Approaching it now, I think. Okay, there we go. 9.5 degrees. Alright, whoa. Bit of a wiggly there. And... 
otherwise everything seems nominal all right so now it's obviously uh, not usual to be launching well not obviously but I don't think it's usual to be launching an interplanetary mission from wallops but um, this is one of the benefits of being in charge so we are launching from here anyway um, and of course that means that we have a little bit more inclination to deal with but that should not be a problem all right so uh, throttle is up SAS is on uh, and we are a go so let us launch engine slip and we're off the Magni 3 carrying the Robinson 2 probe to Jupiter and the tower is clear so obviously I've got infernal robotics installed and we are using it with this probe we are still not using signal delay otherwise uh, the other functions of remote tech are are active so of course uh, we're going to be relying on the new satellites that we put up the geosync satellite and uh, and whatever other communication we have lingering, we've got so much stuff in orbit around Earth. It's uh, it's quite amazing to look at. Poor remote tech probably has uh, quite a lot of calculations to do all the time. Okay, trajectory is nominal. Past Mach one. We should now be past max Q. Yep, it's dropping. Uh oh. Overheating sound. But what was it? We've got a lot of components that uh, are in the probe, but they should all be shielded from everything. So uh, the fairing itself got pretty hot there. Hmm. Interesting. We're not as shallow as we could be, so that's worrying. Because uh, I could have gone much shallower than this. And that would have produced more heating. Okay, going for a booster set in one and <laughs> seconds don't work out quite right. But there we go, booster set, and now just five seconds away from first stage separation due to the interesting configuration of this rocket. Okay. Uh, procedural fairings. Okay, now. Uh, oh, those fairings. Huh, okay. That's fine. Still not uh, going off the way I'd like them to. But at least they're off. Alright, J2. Actually, the J2 looks spiffier than I thought it did. Seems to recall it not looking quite as good as it does right now. Okay, uh, first of all, the AIES antenna that we need for communication. Let's see, there it goes. And we might as well get this targeted up to here. Well, it's been long enough since the last time I launched this rocket that I forgot the uh, optimal trajectory at this point, so I have to pitch up to 35. We'll see. Might have to do even more than that. 
basically I should not have gone down to 28 pitch should have probably held about uh, 30 to 35 so this is falling a little bit short right now well we're headed back down again not uh, not optimal at all we're gonna have to burn some of the third stage in order to get to orbit we do have some delta V buffer here so hopefully it won't jeopardize the mission okay well we are headed for orbit with about 500 meters per second less than we should have had so that's quite a waste actually for a simple mistake in trajectory there okay well that's that engine alright separation still these things don't like to go off okay then the common cryogenic thing bobber there we go common extensible cryogenic engine okay we'll cut it there 244 by 166 very tight orbit but uh, considering the we'll call it a malfunction on my part the failure to make the right trajectory decision I think it's okay now Ike really? Ike now orbits Jewel because we needed the right stuff for Jupiter's planets okay so I'll plot the Jupiter intercept okay so with uh, 6440 meter per second initial burn and then a mid-course plane change around 285 meters per second we're going to get within 800 well within a thousand kilometers let's just say of uh, Jupiter I could have plotted a collision course but uh, no point in that so we just need to do this maneuver let's see if this thing has enough reaction wheel control to turn us to the maneuver node probably not or it would take a very laborious amount of time so but the maneuver nodes in 15 minutes oh it's it's going there okay well we're getting close to the maneuver node and so the plan is that I'll do, do as much science as I can before attempting an aero break at Joule so we're going to do the thing that I did with Mars as well so uh, discovering the aero breaking altitude for Jupiter and probably that means this probe is going to die but as long as we get to Jupiter and transmit some science from there with the goo the container we'll definitely get uh, close to Joule if we're trying to aero break at it so yeah uh, lots of science to be had before this thing explodes uh, if it explodes or it could be flung out into interstellar space uh, it's sort of a balance between the two we're trying to find the happy medium between being flung out and burning up of course that's the usual thing with ferro breaking all right so time warp I wish there was a air breaking calculator for soul system as opposed to the Kerbal system that would be helpful I still don't know the equations and calculations necessary to calculate an error break myself okay we're getting close to the point where I have to decide whether or not to go around or whether to just uh, continue this burn and it looks like we're pretty close to our no nominal trajectory right now I know it's very difficult to see with all this stuff and I can't zoom any closer but uh, you can see the dotted line is the nominal trajectory and the blue line is our burn and where we're at right now right here we're still pretty close so I think we can manage it without uh, having to but then again the the acceleration on the next stage might be too slow it's, it's gonna be close 
but we have the delta v surplus necessary to make corrections so hopefully that'll be good enough third stage engine is out fuel balance was excellent uh, we're going to use the others rockets for an extra boost here odd sound but okay separation and the Estes engine Estes engine is lit and good and we continue our burn for Jupiter. Lights, I don't know why I pointed, I, I can't, couldn't have pointed them in that direction. I'm sure I wanted to point them at the body. I wonder what happened there. Okay, we have the beginnings of a Jupiter encounter as our SS engine has done its thing. So, with that now, the Estes stage is done and we're going to discard that. And I am happy that I put three one kill Newton thrusters instead of just one. So this won't take quite as long. Rather than necessarily looking at the maneuver node, since we've probably deviated from that already, I'm just going to minimize my dual periapsis here. Whoop, whoop. Okay, there we go. That was the minimum. Okay, so I am going to have to replot this maneuver. Okay, dual periapsis of 624 kilometers in two years, 132 days, and uh, costs less than it did before, so actually we got a better deal. Probably ended up burning more over here than we should have, but all right. Uh, with that, I think our probe is ready to go. I turned off an always on antenna that I always slap on uh, this one, this uh, DFRD. And so that saved us uh, one unit of electric charge. So it looks like uh, the charge situation is stable, even in the dark. Um, I need to get the instrument arms out. There we go. Using Infernal Robotics. Okay, here we go. We're starting to be in daylight here, it looks like. And our instrument arms are out, making sure that the RTGs, the radioisotopes, are far away from our sensitive scientific instruments. Uh, just... Yeah, that's about right. Okay, so everything is set to go. Let's head out to the... Well, let's point towards the right direction and then head out to the mid-course plane change node. It's clearly going to be an ascending node based on the way we're pointing now. Okay. Oh, uh, hmm, actually, let's see. Ah, this is the camera, I believe. Yes. This is the onboard camera for the for the probe. Oh. Whoa. Oh, I guess that's the debris from what we yeah, that's what we just uh, dumped. It'd be weird to randomly encounter debris in in Earth space. Oh, there's Earth. Okay, that's what I wanted. So, we are going to depart Earth. Oh, we're losing view of it. Come on. Okay. Ah, darn Z fighting. Making a mess of what would otherwise be a pretty scene. Okay, okay, I give up.
Alright, well, so much for that scenic possibility. Out we go. Okay, approaching our mid-course plane change point, and I think we can deactivate this antenna, it's way out of range of anything. So, now it is time to do this plane change, and then we can get closer to Jupiter. I think it's uh, good enough timing. Okay, here we go. Getting close to intended periapsis. Okay, 334 kilometers sounds fine to me. Okay, I have no idea what periapsis I should be aiming for as far as uh, aerobraking in uh, Jupiter's atmosphere. I want a very light aerobrake. <laughs> I, I don't want the whole radiation, flames, uh, death and destruction kind of aerobrake. But yeah, we'll have to see. I don't know what altitude that would give, uh, that would require. Uh, all right. Uh, nope, nope. Here we go. We proceed. Up oh, didn't slow down my time warping in time, so I I've got a crash course with Jewel. Let's also correct the fact that I'm going in the wrong direction to meet up with uh, any potential moons should I manage to get into orbit. Make sure we're in the plane of the dual system, which isn't quite all nice and neat. Let's see. I don't know. Probably going to be bad, but let's use this as a benchmark. Uh, let's uh, call it to 350 kilometers, and we'll see how that goes. I don't have enough to uh, slow down into orbit myself. So that's just uh, not a possibility, really. And you can see the delta V requires just to make a, the change I'm doing from way out. Trying to do any maneuver close to Jupiter is... I mean, uh, we're really hoping not to have to do much of that at all. Ah, 373. Okay, uh, let's turn off node so it doesn't spin around. But I am actually going to turn around. Alright, that's uh, close enough to the intended 350 for me. Alright, so now let us approach... Well, let's do some science first, heck. Okay, goo container. Observe mystery goo. While high over Joule, 91 points, Ku feels right at home. Transmit data. Electric charge is holding out great. Just hope all this data gets recorded. Okay, done. Our other instruments. Log gravity data. 154. The sensor calibrates to measure the massive gravitational forces of, well, Jupiter, really. Transmit that, definitely. Hmm. Okay, that's done. I doubt uh, we're going to get a barometer reading. Nope. And thermometer. Nope. Okay. I think we'll save the Science Junior for closer to Jewel. Or Jupiter. Sorry, I'm probably mixing those up quite a lot here. Let's get in there. Still trying to see the Jolly Giant, but I can't. Oh, there it is. 
There it is. Hope I lost it again. Where did it go? Oh! <laughs> okay, uh, I think it's time to uh, get a look through the camera. Oops, sorry. Kerbal joint reinforcement stabilizing. Ah, there we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah. Sea fighting. Let's see if... Time warping doesn't help. Oh, now we're good. Okay, uh, I better just not be in this view. Uh, sometimes graphics ruin the day. Okay, well, anyway, we have business to attend to. Other good container. Still high, okay. Hopefully that little artifacting goes away, yes, eventually. Ooh, this is very imposing. We're still very high. This is like uh, just entering Kerbin Sphere of Influence is where we're, where we're at right now. I'm going to retract these solar panels. They're really not necessary and they're just going to break off in the atmosphere anyway. I'm trusting that the atmosphere begins higher than 334. Well, we're now 334. Probably a definite thing there. Okay, this seems pretty close to Jewel to me. Still high. You know, uh, in around Earth, the high mark is geosync geostationary orbit really and that's you know about 36,000 kilometers so would have expected we'd be there already we'd be lower than high over Jupiter Voyager did not get this close Still high. <sighs> Periapsis is in 29 minutes. It's gonna be pretty serious stuff. Okay, come on. Mystery goo container. Still high. We seem to have like 58, uh, 55.8 more science to transmit. Uh, let's let's just transmit what we can here. Don't know what that was all about, but it's getting pretty tight. Temperatures still seem cool, so we're not anywhere near the atmosphere yet. I expect that no matter what I do, these are probably going to break off, but I'll retract them before, before anything bad happens.
I mean, they'll be facing the brunt of it anyway, no matter what I do. It's possible that because this side has more drag than this side, that uh, maybe this whole thing is going to be flipping out. Don't know. Oh, come on. Oh, well, trans... Uh, no, no. Uh, if there's any more uh, science to be done, we can transmit it from... Oh, no, that one's done. Oh, well. Uh, yeah. Just waiting for low over. Really want you to get close, don't they? What's our temperature like? Still okay. Might be that we're actually gonna end up too high. I'll be. Okay, near Joule. Transmit that data. Ooh, we don't have much time to transmit all this data. I'm gonna go with the Science Junior next. The computer gave an odd report no matter how many times we sent the request. Open the sample bay doors. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't let you do that, was the only reply. The doors did open very promptly when we opened the fuse box panel. Very curious. I think that's the first time I've actually gotten the 2001 reference in this. Guess I haven't done much... No, I must have done Science Junior around Jewel in stock. I wonder why that seems like I haven't gotten that message very often before. Maybe it's just not repeated very often. A lot of the other messages uh, pop up all the time. Especially the one about painting our ships with the with the materials. Come on, give me a done. Done. Okay, transmit. Transmit data. Wow. 80, 48 kilometers per second? That's crazy. This is crazy fast. Let me try the barometer next. Actually, it is like the only time we get to do it. Oh, it's only got toggle display. Ah, uh, both the barometer and the thermometer are non-cooperative. Okay. Okay, done. Transmit the goo data. No, no severe temperature yet. I'm going to uh, pull back the instrument arms. Again, not that that helps anything. So close to a thousand. I assume... Well, it still says we can do a little bit more of this, so I'm just going to send that. Oh, it says we're in vacuum there. Just having a thermometer reading and a display here will be good. Let's see what you have to say about this. Actually, let's be more reasonable. Let's see what Fermi Aerospace has to say about this. Not really encountering much atmosphere. Wow, I thought it would extend further than it does, I guess. Okay, well, I'm convinced we're too high. Not much I can do about that. I'm gonna retro burn as much as I can. Don't have much time. The full fuel amount is very... I don't know what are the chances we'd end up hitting uh, Saturn. 
Not particularly likely. Oh, we've got atmosphere. Hold on. Uh, well, not much of it. That's all right. Still says in vacuum, the little uh, stupid little barometer. Temperature seems okay. As expected, there seems to be more drag on this. Well, yeah, it does seem more drag on this side. That's right. thermometer I don't really trust the temperature reading there let's see we've got negative 33 there negative 49 still very high in the atmosphere oh well these generic well they're burning though well I don't know 318 how about uh, no that's pretty cold cameras pretty cold RTGs very cold we're going up again Very little chance that we're going to get captured here. You can stay quite a long while in the dual system without getting captured. Best chance is to encounter something along the way. But we're not quite at an inclination that that's going to work out. If I see some sort of encounter, I'll, I'll stop it and try and get to it, but hopefully, I mean, there's a slight chance that one of the moons will try and slow us down, but that's about the best I can do right now. Uh, no point having far up, actually. We're going up again. Didn't even reach a minor amount of atmospheric density. Flame effects started pretty quickly, considering we weren't even hot. I don't suppose the thermometer and barometer would condescend to help us out here. Nope. Don't know how long this can go. It's getting more and more like an orbit. Actually, Mechjeb already says we're in orbit, but uh, there's sort of a fudge room as things get rounded off here. I don't know how the game calculates the patched conics, which is how it calculates orbits. Well, gravitational influences, I mean. Okay, we, got, we are in orbit, amazingly enough. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to burn any more because if we ever want to transfer to something else, and uh, we're we're in a reasonable plane to do such things, um, I don't need to do any more of that. I'll actually leave it at uh, at its current periapsis, which will bring us down very slowly, and maybe up there. Oh, it's it's a one year orbit though. Yeah, I should. It'll be too take too long to do retro burns if I leave it in a one in such a long orbit. Let's burn it down to well I don't know how close I can get, so we'll see. Probability that I'll actually get a encounter with one of the moons is low. But maybe if I jump out of the game and come back in later we can do the barometer and thermometer reading in Joule's atmosphere. But uh, getting orbit around Joule, this is uh, basically going to be it for this episode. We finally have a successful Joule orbiter. 
and so we've got plenty of science out of it, lots and lots of science, but not quite to my goal of 1,000. So I'm going to want to come back to this dual mission at the beginning of the next episode to see what I can uh, do further around Jewel now that we've got the Robinson 2 in orbit around it. And then after that I'm going to see what I can do with the science so that I can proceed with further missions. Though frankly this Robinson 2 seems like a pretty good interplanetary spacecraft. I think it's I mean, but the problem is, uh, if we try and push it as Saturn or Uranus, we're going to end up not having the range on the antenna, and then the antenna, the upgraded antenna, the one that uh, will re will have the longer range, will require more electric charge, which, uh, so we're going to have to make improvements, create a sort of Robinson 3 in order to uh, make it really work out. How high are we right now? Uh, so I uh, will get another chance to see where Jupiter's atmosphere gets really dangerous. That's going to be important. Even if we don't get any other science at all, I want to see about uh, air breaking around Jupiter and see what kind of numbers we need to go for for that. Uh, I, we definitely have an upper bounds. Uh, definitely this is not uh, not a helpful altitude. We'll be aiming lower. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, get this into a tighter orbit, and uh, at the beginning of this, uh, the next episode, uh, you'll see how that turns out. I'm not going to waste any time. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.